Good morning, good morning. Is everything looking okay here? Good morning. Well, I'm up early again. What time is it? Oh, where's my clock? Oh, there it is. It it got hidden. My clock, see? It's my, yeah, it's my little clock. It says it's 441. Let's put that back up there where it belongs. Okay. 4.41 a.m. I'm awake. But anyway, um, I just wanted to come in and say hello. I haven't been here a couple days. Well, I've been here, but I haven't had been there with you guys for a couple days. So I, um, so I thought I'd just step in to just let, update you to what, what's going on. Um, I've been really really busy packaging up kits I am so blessed by how many people have ordered um, the the um, slow stitching kits that I'm putting together in in and putting them up on on Etsy they're selling like hotcakes which is amazing for Papa and I. So thank you, thank you, thank you. But they're getting packaged. I mean, all I've I got one I have to mail off this morning, but I've mailed off I think sixteen packages, which are amazing. Some of them in the cigar box, and some of them without the cigar box. And um, and so we're going to get started on the slow stitching series learn with me series on the 25th of January which is Monday Monday evening 7:30 eastern time so then that'll be 6:30 central and on our earlier each time zone before that but um 7:30 eastern time Monday, January 25th. And so, and I'm looking forward to that because I, I, I am hoping that everybody gets as much value from this slow stitching as I am getting. I, when I first started watching it or seeing it done, I guess I was looking at some of the videos that were more, um, deeply involved or something because to me it looked like oh this is just going to be too much for me and so I thought no I can't do that I just can't do that and um but then I started talking to people about it and I started seeing some more videos on it and saying oh wait a minute these stitches don't have to be perfect I can do that and so I started it up well I started and my goodness I have found them to be absolutely gorgeous I I mean fun they're fun they're calming it's like you're in a state of serenity when you're when you're slow stitching and it's amazing and and I have like more than one going at more than one piece going at one time. I don't have to, I don't have to um, do one, finish it, then start another one, finish it. I have little pieces that I don't even know where they're going to go. And let me show you, for instance. Now let me show you, for instance, is here. Here is a little piece. I just took this piece of pink fabric whoops this pink fabric I stitched on and see my stitches on the back how how I just stitch it like this little piece of doily I just went to each corner and I took a stitch at each corner and just went around to get that one stitched on and put a button in the middle then I took a piece oh then I did some one of the stitches I've learned, or am learning, because I don't have any of these learned, is I did that chain stitch right up here to make the stem. Then I cut out just a piece of fabric that had some green on it, and I cut out like a leaf. And so, and then on here, right here, I just took a piece of muslin, and I put that on there, and I just did a running stitch or a borrow stitch around that, and, um, to hold that on then I 
put then I went with this like a that red thread is like a um just a bit of a um like a slash almost see like like a you know I just well whatever you call it that's what I did and then I took this piece of rickrack and I just pulled it through it fit through there so I put it through put that little red bow right there at the bottom and um and then I just in all the spaces that didn't have something in it I just did that borrow stitching and it's not even straight but I think that piece is beautiful. Now, I'm not sure what I'll do with that little piece, but it's going to go on a finish on a, maybe a page in my, maybe a page in my fabric book journal that I'm making somewhere. That's going to go. And then this piece is a piece of burlap ribbon. And I just took the burlap ribbon and then I did the stitching, the borrow stitch, just write down that piece in different colors and to me that is beautiful looks beautiful on both sides that I did then this piece um, was just a beautiful I love that fabric that is just looks like it's all just um, spatter painted it's just beautiful and so I took on this piece Actually, I put that button on the middle first, and then I went and started making these, what I call my little sun rays, away from the button. So it kind of looks like the button is in the middle of the sunshine. And then on the end, ed ends of each one of them strips, if you can see, is I put a um, my version of a, um, of a French knot. It's not done exactly right, so it's got to be a scrap and Lizzie knot because it's not done right. Because when I look at the, a lot of these, um, a lot of these instructions or diagrams, like I've got this little thing here that just says embroidery stitches. It come out from an old book, and um, and it shows you just like one image for each stitch. And some of them, to me, kind of don't really compute in this here computer. And so, but it does have quite a few different stitches, and I can get the general idea from these little images. And so having the general idea, I can run with them and come up with something. And so I couldn't quite get that French knot right, so I kind of did my put my own twist on it so that it would work for me. And then this I took is a is a baby wipe that's been used for um, cleaning up splatters of um, ink and dried. And then I took and went through. Let me see. See there how you can see the running stitch even through that. I basically wanted to see if you could sew on it, and you can. Well, I folded it in half, you know, so I have two layers there. And um, that that really, and I'm not sure how I'll finish that up. I did that much, and then I set it off to the side because I'll work on it some more. And then this was a larger piece I picked up and just started borrow stitching on this one. And and that's borrow stitching, or um, in embroidery, it's a running stitch. But there is so many different, I have found by doing my research, that there is so many different kinds of stitching. Um, there is what they call cantha stitching, cantha stitches, borrow stitches, sashiko, Embroidery, that's only four right there. And there's more than that, so many different styles of stitching. And so I figure, well, good, if there's that many different styles of stitching, then Scrap and Lizzie style is, hey, it's right up there with the best of them. And so what we're going to do when we, um, st okay, did I already say when we're going to do that? January 25th, 7.30? p.m. Eastern Time.
live stream. Okay, I'm going to do it on live. The reason I want to do this one on live is because I think because it's a learn with me series. It's not a teaching. It's a learn with me because I'm learning. And while I'm learning, I'm hoping that everybody will learn. But I am expecting <laughs> that people will be putting in suggestions and such as to something that they may be doing on their slow stitching so that we will work together on this. So we're going to be teaching each other. And now I know some of the people in the box, the um, people in the chat, will be already experienced at embroidery or some kind of hand stitching because there's like there and even when you talk about embroidery there's so many there's cruel embroidery and there's embroidery embroidery there's there's different kinds of embroidery and so um the names aren't coming to me right now hard anger there's there's different ones uh kinds of embroidery and so what when you when you're talking about slow stitching you're putting all of these things together you're pulling up a part of this type and a part of this type and just put the needle put the thread through the needle and stitch and the, once you put that first stitch in your fabric you are doing you some slow stitching and so um this here little piece that little heart, if you can see, my lighting isn't the best, but if you can see that heart, I just got it pinned on this project, but the heart was made to be by my friend Joy. She made the heart, and that's actually got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven separate pieces of fabric. Now she's got that stitched on there with just a running stitch, all of it stitched together. I have it pinned on this. I have the heart pinned on here because I'm gonna blanket stitch around it, and um, and 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 she's got it stitched on. Oh, she stitched that on like a piece of muslin. It's got a piece of muslin, and she stitched that on. She may have. I'm thinking now that maybe what she did was put the pieces on and then cut out the heart shape. I think that might be what she did. That's my guess. And that's what we do. When we look at somebody else's work, you can guess at how it was done and you can say, hmm, yeah, I can do that. And you, it doesn't have to be like perfect. It doesn't have to be like perfect and done like some people would say right because it's not there is no wrong, right or wrong. If you stitch something on there, it's stitched on there. It's, um, it's, yeah, it's stitched on there. Let's see, I got a, oh, this I want to show you this too. Now, let me pull this off of here. This is, um, this is a little bit more, um, a little more, uh, something. It's a little more. But this is also something that um, Joy had done on a prayer flag. And that's a piece of muslin, and it's just got the raw edge. I love the raw edges. Do you see how the threads are? And um, then she, she um, with green and yellow, she made just a stem of flowers and then that stitch is like just a little bit of a running stitch and then the little bitty stitches she put on there to make the little leaves and it's beautiful and then she put the buttons on there and and look at that beautiful beautiful um it's a beautiful design and this is a prayer flag. There's a casing at the top where you can put a little branch through. I had another one here, but I don't know what to do with it. Um, and so that you can hang these. And they're meant to be hung outside to carry your prayers through the wind. And so we're going to work on something like that, too. Let me put this back on there. And i got to give that to my daughter. And... So it's, it, it, I am really, really, really getting excited about this. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you something else that I'm working on. Because like I say, I can work on so many things. 
at one time. I can work on a little something and then I can work on a little something else. And um, so I'm going to kind of show you here. This here item I'm working on right here is, um, is it's going to be just like a little bit of a pocketbook. Like an envelope style little pocketbook. So I have, I put the denim on first, and then I've got an iron on pol, um, foam, it is, that I've got to make it. I wanted it to be kind of stiff. And I really didn't know what this foam stuff was, but um, I ordered it not really knowing what it was. And I kind of like it. It's kind of heavy, kind of not heavy, heavy in weight, but it's thick, kind of thickish. So it gives it a lot of body. And so, and then I put the back piece on there and I did a little bit and, you know, some might say this part of it is cheating, but, um, this piece, this here strip, this strip, this strip, and this strip is, um, I sewed that on with sewing machine. Okay. I got that on with the sewing machine, but then I started with some stitches and I'm going to go in between all of these with stitches, but then I'm also going to go along the edges here with a, um, the edges of the, of the, um, braids. I'm going to go with a blanket stitch and I'm going to go down the edge like this one here. I'll probably go with yellow, my yellow thread to go along the edge here. And, um, then on the edge of this color, maybe I'll use maybe I'll use a yellow there or an orange there. This one here doesn't match at all, but um, and I don't know if I'll do any more on this stitch, unless maybe I do some of the little um, French knots or Scandinavian knots or whatever knots I'm going to use. And so, but and then I went here. And now see, like, nothing has to be perfect. This one here, this stitch in the red, in the red was called something. Oh, it was called the feather stitch. But in my version, it really does not look so much like, like the, um, the picture. It doesn't look very much like the image, the image here of the feather, well, stitch, that one right there. That's how kind of, that's the only image that they give you right there is just that. And so I kind of looked at that and then I kind of did this and it sort of looks the same, but not exactly. So we're not going for exactly. And so then I started making, now the blue threads, I'm just going through I went to each one of the spaces in here, and now I looked at the image for the um, for the um, French knot, and and I tried to do it like the it showed, but it just somehow wasn't working. So. Then uh, my friend told me another way she does it, and so and she told me that. And it made sense when she told me that. And then when I started doing that, it didn't work. So then this is what I do. I pull my thread through where I want my knot. And then I take a little bitty stitch right beside of it. And um, put a little stitch right beside of that. And then I wrap the thread around the needle before I pull it all the way through. Now I will pull it all the way through, holding that stitch down there so it stays down there, all that wrapping, see, and then this just right down there on that thread, and then, um, and then I'll put that back through, and then I have my little sort of a French knot. It's like a knot that's just learning to speak French. And so it's not exact, but for my project, it is perfect. And that's what we're going to learn. We are going to learn this together, that what we do, when you learn something with me, you're learning that you can get it done without having it perfect. 
And so, see, I tried to do it. I think you're supposed to just be able to pull the thread through, then wrap, and without putting that extra stitch in there, but I couldn't get it to do right. I just couldn't get it to do right. So then when I did it that way, when I did it that way, get that. See, because, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. So, but this way, it works. It works just fine for me. You can put two wraps or three wraps. I, I put, I put three wraps because I want to, I always want to go big. And so, see there, I got another one in there. And um, see how they're coming along? Not real straight, you know, but then we are not into perfection. And so that's what you'll f find on um, the Learn With Me stitches, um, slow stitching series, is that what I do is so not perfect, but what I do works. And so I could never put this probably in a the county fair, you know, or anything them Susie homemakers at the county fair, they'd probably laugh me out of the barn. I don't know. Maybe not, but probably not. You know this you know I love Bohemian things. I love I love Bohemian style. And I think that might be why I like this so well is because you can put colors in here love color i just love you know people say well what is your favorite color and i usually say purple but i really do not have a favorite color because i just love colors i love bright colors i love pastels it's just i just love color and um and and lots of colors i love the rainbow and so and so that's just like a bunch of colors. And so I'm looking forward to starting this, um, this, this series because I have a feeling that a lot of you are going to just love it. And so, you know, I might work on this as a, I might do a, um, I might work on this until I get it half done and then it might sit for a while but I am curious to get this one done this little pocketbook done so um so I can see what it is like what it looks like when it's finished because I just know it's going to be beautiful and I don't know if I'll use it or if I'll give it as a gift to somebody but what I was thinking about, even for the finishing of this, to put it together, is just a minute, let me make this little Scandinavian French knot in here. Okay, what I'm thinking about is that when I get this finished, when it's when it when I'm finished with the trimmings in it, then what I want to do, I'll I'll trim these edges to where they're real smooth. Out, I'm being careful with my stitches that I won't go to the very edge, because I don't want to cut them when I trim this. But when I trim it, I'll just use a ruler and my, I'll use my ruler and a um rotary cutter and I'll cut that so it's straight on both edges and I think what I want to do is just like go across the top first with a blanket stitch across this piece and then it'll be folded over and I'm going to just attach it together with a blanket stitch all the way around and then to close it what I'm thinking I'm going to do is use like maybe a crocheted flower or a um i'm thinking a crocheted flower is what what i'm thinking that will be put right here in the middle 
and I'll make change, you never know, and then a loop here, a loop that'll come from here and here down, and then that is what will go, that loop will go around this crocheted, this is just a yo-yo here, but um, like go around that crocheted flower or something to make the, um, to make the, the closure. That's what I'm thinking. I may change. I might put a button here. I don't know. But, um, because I can change my mind on anything that I do. And, um, and then for the handle, I think what I want to use is I have a lot of th strips of, <coughs> excuse me, like in this, in this tote here, I have, <coughs> A lot of strips of fabric and um, I'm thinking and if I take these are just strips of torn fabric and I just store them on on a um, little strip of chipboard but see it's just strips of torn fabric so that's my torn fabric ribbon and I have different Ooh, I didn't know that was in there Ooh. I didn't know that was in there. I'm going to take that out and put that on here. But I have different ones on here. And different different kinds in here. And in here is some in here. And But I, what I want to do is I want to get and, like, braid it. Maybe I'll take, like, this and this, put it together on one strand and then another and another strand and, another, and braid the whole thing. And that's what I think I want to do with with my, um, for the handle. And that's what's in my mind right now. And will I change my mind? Maybe. I don't know. Because I just do not plan ahead. Isn't that pretty? I might stitch that on there too. I just found that in that box. I like that. Oh, look at it. It wants to twist. What if I put it on there twisted? That might be pretty. But, yeah. So that is just where I'm at in my thought process. And, um... And... And so... That's that. That's where I am in my thought process right now, um, and I am loving this. I am loving to do this. I I did list some more of my kits on Etsy. You um, so because they sold out when I the first time I listed them, they sold out, and then so I put up some more. If you're interested, but many of you have everything you need. If you got needle and thread and some scraps of fabric, well then, you can cut the shirt tail off your husband's shirt. It doesn't matter where you get your fabric. That got cut the end off of a curtain, you know. Um, and, and you got something to start your stitching. So you don't need to have the kit. And a lot of the things that I'm sure that people will come up with is things that they have already in their own stash. Because if you're anything like me, you've got like a little bit of everything. Well, see, I've had 71 years to collect, so, so I have a lot of things. And as I'm going through things to put into the kits, I keep finding new things. So none, no two kits are alike. No two kits are alike. Although every kit has got in, every kit has got a 12 by 12 piece of muslin. A 12 by 12. You can use that 12 by 12 to add, to work right on it if you want to. Or you can take that 12 by 12 piece of muslin and then you can start adding your pieces to it. You might put a piece here, and then you might put this piece here, and maybe you'll put this piece right here, and then and just get them all stitched on, just in a different, different ways. And so, because it's going to be your own art project, and see when you start putting them all together like this, 
And then if you get them all stitched on like this, then oh my gosh, beauty just beholds it. So that is what we're going to be doing. And I sure do hope you'll join. I want to see a nice group of us out here doing. Now, my love has been lately in a lot of paper crafting. And I haven't given up on my paper crafting. I love my paper crafting. I'm getting to the end of this thread. I want to make one more knot with that thread without pulling it through the eye of the needle. Ooh. There we go. It's going to work. It's going to work. And then there. So that's as far as that strip is going to go. That's that particular strip right there is finished. But then when I put on, maybe I'll even do like a green along here just to give it more color to, to um, stitch that end on there. I think maybe a green might work well. You see my pin cushion? It's a truck. It's a truck. I can drive it all over. I can drive it over here and drive it over here. I don't even need a driver's license to drive my truck. But anyhow, my friend made that for me. I get a drink of my coffee. That's good. That's real good. Okay, now. Now then, Elizabeth, where did you put your... Just a minute. Let me get a piece of... Okay, I'm going to just take this green and I'm going to Oh, you know what I need? I just broke my um my needle threader. I want to get one of those heavy duty needle threaders. Okay, wait a minute. Where do I have it in here? I need a needle threader. I can't hardly thread these needles without a threader. Mm. Oh, I have that green in here too. Oh, yeah, I do have a needle threader. In. Yeah. Once these eyes start getting old, then you need to have, make sure you have a needle threader. So we put that through there. Put the threader through the eye of the needle. And then put the thread through the eye of the needle threader. And then pull it through. Okay, so then, the needle threader right there cut me off a piece to start with. I don't like to get like a real long piece. Oh, another thing you guys will see in your box. If hmm. hang on a second. Hang on. Hang on to your bridges just for a second. Okay. When you get your box, you'll see that there is a dryer sheet in the in the box. That is because you can take your dryer sheet and go along with the dryer sheet to just go along your thread. And that dryer sheet has just enough of something in it to where it actually spins glides through your fabric better. It you I mean it'll work fine without it too, but it actually goes through your fabric a little bit better by using that dryer sheet. That was a tip from a that was a tip from a um subscriber too. Wait a minute. Now I'm trying to think how did I do this now? I go this way Let's see, I want my, I want this to go up here. Hmm. 
yeah okay so I'm gonna go see you c I could do it have my my long strand beside on the outside or up here on the inside I want it up here on the inside so I'm gonna go back down there and come up here it's like a rail fence and I want the rail up here okay let's see if I'm doing this right no I'm not oh I know what I didn't do right okay let me pull that back out let me pull that back out Okay, because I see what I did. I think I see what I did. I always, my first stitch is always like, wait a minute, what is, how do we do that? Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, how do we do this? Okay, so I'm going to put this, put this stitch up here, right here. Okay, then I want this to go up here. So I want... Okay, I want this here to go down. Okay, so I got my first table leg, and then I need my table top. How in the world? Okay. Wait a minute, I am just losing my mind. Okay, wait, let me see if I can... Yeah, okay. I think I've got it. I think, I think I've got it. Okay, yeah, I got it. Now, always my first stitch comes wrong. Why? I don't know why. See, that's why I need the people in the box. So I'm going to just make a stitch up here. Making sure that my, um, see, I make sure the thread is up here, the thread's up, up here, and then I go and make this stitch, the table leg part, make that stitch, and then the when you pull it through, then you've always already got that little blanket stitch going on. One one video I watched, the, ta the teacher said that the blanket stitch and the buttonhole stitch were the same. Then I watched the very next video, and they said a different person. And she goes, now don't, some people think the blanket stitch and the buttonhole stitch are the same. They're not. I go, oh, good grief. Don't be telling me these things that, you know. So so what we're saying, though, there is, there is so many ways of doing, um, doing your stitches. Let me see, where did I get a knot here or something? A little tangle. Okay. A little tangle. Just a little tangle. There we go. That's why I try to be... I don't take too much thread at one time because... Don't put too much thread on my needle because it can then start causing a stressful moment in your life. We're doing this to avoid stress. And so I got I got it down pat there. I think I, I think this is the way you do it. 
So, and sometimes just getting started at the starting points is where I have my issues. So that's why I need you all to help me. I need you all's help. Mm hmm. And we'll learn something. We will learn something. We don't know if it's going to be right, but we're going to learn it. See now how along the edge of this orange here? Then I have that, um, It to me it looks like a little rail fence. And I've done some stitching like this where the rail goes at the bottom, at the edge of your, f and then just the sticks, the, well, like the fence posts stick up only and then this fence part is down here but um this one here i've got it going this away uh oh this away uh oh that away uh oh this away then oh and, and so and then you just keep on keeping on and if it starts getting any kind of stressful to you or something well then you stop Put your needle up, stop, put your needle up, go color a picture in a coloring book, or do something else, read a story, or do some painting, or do some paper crafting, and then come back. And um, don't let yourself get sometimes I have a little trouble get pulling on my needle. I have a pair of pliers here. I keep these these pliers that's got like a rubber um, doohickey. They're in they're for making jewelry, but they they work good as needle pullers too. If just sometimes I don't know why my I don't know if it's just that I'm losing strength because I'm old as Methuselah, but um. Sometimes I just can't pull that needle, and so I just use my pliers. Use, just use my pliers, whatever works, you know. You will find, you know, when you get old as Methuselah, like I am, that you find that a lot of the things in your kitchen and in your hubster's toolbox are actually craft items. And I used to be one that, man... Kitchen gadgets. Boy, I'd have them all. I had them all when I was in the cooking thing because I was constantly cook, cook, cook all the time. New recipes, try new recipes. Hear of a new um, kitchen gadget, I'd have to get that and try it. And um, now I am finding that a lot of my little kitchen gadgets make pretty doggone good Pretty doggone good art pro art tools, C art tools and craft tools, and it's amazing how they morph into new things. And so, because cooking now, when I had a whole house full of youngins and and stuff, I I was and I was young and I had a whole heart full of energy. Well, I still have a heart full of energy. It's just I have a body full of energy. And now it's easier. I like my air fryer. <laughs> I don't put anything in the air fryer. And um, one pot meals. Slow cooker. Yep, there's cooking for me. Slow cooker. Air pot. Air fryer. A microwave. Yeah. My stove top is pretty much part of the countertop. It's no big deal. Mm -hmm. Because here I am. Your dishes become little containers for your um art supplies yeah you can go shopping in your kitchen go shopping in your husband's toolboxes he probably don't use them either mm -hmm. okay now now see i went along that whole that whole edge of the um that whole edge of the orange now and I put that green in there and see then that puts more color and I'll probably go along the edge of this one too putting some kind of color in there and I might even go right up the middle of this 
maybe with just a running stitch or a borrow stitch of even another color. But I, the whole thing, this whole thing here is just going to be different stripes. There's definitely going to be something else in here. This is too wide of one pattern, so I, I want to put something in the middle, something different in the middle. I won't do that now, though, but I'm going to do that. But I got a lot to do on this, and I, and as you can see from even just here to here, that it's just so much beauty in this. And I am curious to get it finished. But this morning, I got to work on my quilt a little bit more because my quilt is piled up on my on my cutting table and I need my cutting table to do some more things. So I want to get that quilt completed today so I can put it on my bed and take pictures of it. And then, because um, I only have one more strip to even sew on it. And um, so I'm going to get that done today. I'll get that on my bed. I'll put, take pictures of that so I can put them up on the group. And um, the group is Scrap and Lizzie Unicorns on Facebook. And that's our group where we can add any kind of um, art projects that you're doing, craft projects you're doing, anything. Put that up, put them up on that group so we can see what you're doing. And um, so I'm going to be posting pictures of my quilt on there. And um, I really need to post more pictures than I'm posting because I, I, because I just need to. But this is going to be gorgeous. This is just going to be um, just I love I this is this is me this this is me I like anything boho bohemian bohemian look the colorful look the 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 colors don't have to match we don't have when I was looking I was looking at um on Etsy I was going on Etsy and I bought I mean I looked at um I looked at um things that people had to offer there um because there's a lot of slow stitching kits <coughs> excuse me on etsy i supposed to grow my elbow and um so and basically i was going in to see what all they offered in their kits and so many of them were so many of the kits are that are listed are themed so a lot of them might be just all blues, different color of blues, different color of greens, different color of red. You know, they're themed, and um, which is really, really nice. But I am, I take all those themes and mix them together and make a big old pot of goulash. But, um, but, um, and so... I said, no, I don't think I want to do mine that way. I want mine different. My kits are very eclectic, so you will find, well, you will find, oh, and another thing. You will find things like these. See, I'm thinking that I, um, let's see, I have some, well, the, oh, no, I had more than that. Where did they go? Where did they go? Let's see, like... I'm going to put these gold buttons onto a lot of these. Um, but I think I want to go with like these yo-yos right down this strip right here. I think that's what I want to do there. I, but I think I'm going to put them gold buttons in the middle of each of these yo-yos and then those will go here and I'll stitch around the yo-yo. I may, before I put the yo-yos down, I may go with a piece of, of rickrack. Let's see, where's my little dish of, oh, it's in a cigar box. Is it this one? Um, yeah, I may, so you'll find, just a minute, I get my foot over my bench here, so I can reach this cigar box.
Okay. I have... I got a label some of my cigar boxes. This cigar box, I've got a lot of just trims in here. Do I have a green, green, green green? No, I don't need a green then. Okay, so I might. So you could take... I love my cigar boxes because I use them for a lot of storing. Um... So I could go and put put a strip of, and there is rickrack in y'all's, um, in the kits. There you go. See there? That would even make a difference there. Putting that rickrack, even putting a piece of rickrack. Now this, I would put a more of a contrasting color, but I might could put a put a rick, put a piece of rick rack down the middle here. Rick rack, rick rack. You just don't know where what you can do and where where you can put it and and you can keep changing your mind. This is a real narrow rick rack, so pretty. Ooh, oh look how pretty that is. See how that, when you just add more color. And if I were to put this on now, I would just use um, very fine thread. And just to go and stitch that, probably just borrow stitch it, just um, run and stitch to put that all down there. I would just use a very fine thread. And because um, it's such a fine little piece just fine I'm telling you it's fine but but I find this to be so much fun but see how I put a gold button on this one I think I will put a gold button on because see I have these gold buttons here and so if I put a gold button these are just whoopsie 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 daisies see how pretty those will look with a, just a little gold button in the middle. See how pretty that'll look? And so I might get all crazy and make bunches of these. Then I could list them on Etsy and maybe people would even buy them. I don't know. They might not, but it'd be worth a try for me. And so, but yes, that's, that's, I just wanted to kind of update you where I'm at and what, what's been going on. And so, and then look at this, look at these beads. These are, um, hmm. there's that word missing again. There's a, a name for these beads, but they're, they're like long tubes. They're like little tubes. And, um, no, I can't remember what they're called. I know what they're called. And, um, but you can stitch those beads on. And you can use these beads, like where I showed you this one, how this, I made that starburst on here, on this piece. You can put, like when you're stitching that on, put those beads on as you're stitching. Um... Yeah, it's not coming to me, but they're they're just long skinny beads. They're like pieces, like little bitty straws. But yeah, that those there's so much, and I can't give you all the information all at one time. So that's why we're going to have a series because what I'm learning, I want to um, share with you, and then what you're learning, we're going to share with each other, and um, I think this is going to be great so monday i not this coming monday but monday the 25th is when my first one will be oh i'll be making videos before then but i don't know that i'll go live for anything before then so um but yeah that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to read a little. Now, those of you that know me know that I read at every, at the end of all of my videos. 
One of my go-to books is this one, You Are Stronger Than You Know, by Cindy Utter. I just watched one of her videos this morning. She put up a video, and it was like, she didn't speak through it. She was just doing a painting in her, um, in her art book, in her art journal, and she had just music. She just had music playing, and so her painting was real time. It was she didn't speed through it, but it was just quiet. Just watch her paint, and um, and then the music. Cindy Utter, she sent me this book years ago. I think it. I was still first starting even to do videos when she sent me this book and look at the edge of that book do you see how old and crotchety it's getting well at one time i spilt my coffee on it and um but it it's okay it it see here you see that big old coffee stain right see that big old coffee stain on there yeah some people have to work hard to get coffee stained papers not me i just spill my coffee but in, <clears throat> in this book, it's called You Are Stronger Than You Know, Words of Hope and Encouragement for Someone Living with a Chronic Illness. And I have put this book in my favorite things on, on my um, Amazon affiliate link because I have been asked about this book many times. And so I put a link to where you can get it there on my affiliate link, which my affiliate link is always under, most always under my videos. And so, but I like to find something um, inspirational or something to read. Look at this one. See the coffee, how it coffee stained on that page? Do you see that coffee stain? Sometimes you just need to walk away. That's all right. That's what I'll read today. Um, sometimes it's all just too much. Too much to fathom, too much to analyze, too much to accept, too much to do. Sometimes it is better to just let go of all problems, of all tasks, of all burdens that weigh you down. Sometimes the greatest gift you can give yourself is to walk away, to walk out from under, to walk into sunshine and warm you, your soul. Sometimes you will return and your burdens will seem somehow easier to handle than before. Rest in the assurance that you are enough after all. That was written by Minx Boren. That's a neat name, Minx, M-I-N-X. Minx Boren. Sometimes you just need to walk away and I think we all know at this time, at this time, that yes, yeah, sometimes we just need to walk away. Just walk away. Walk into your sewing room. Walk into your sewing room and sew something. Or walk into your art room and, and paint something. Glue something together. Just anything. And so sometimes, yeah, we just need to walk away. So I ask God to watch over you every step you take, every move you make. And, um... He will bring you back to this video. Ah, oh, somebody will bring you back. But and I look forward to seeing you again, and I look forward to you joining us when we do start our series on the 25th of January. And so um, and it's going to be a fun series. I think it's going to be really, really fun. And each one of the, the um, videos will only last like an hour to an hour and a half. I won't, I don't go, hour and a half is probably my limit. I may have went more than that on a live stream, but it's going to be only about an hour and a half at the most for my live stream. So that if you go to watch them over, you know, in the replay, then um, it's not that much. Some of my, re some replays, I can't, you know, I, I try to get the replays, but then they're so long that I, I, yeah, I just can't sit there that long. So I have to watch it for a while and then pause, watch it, pause. Well, gee, you can always do it anyway, just watch and pause, watch and pause. And, or you can fast forward through two on replays. But I'm going to try to keep mine an hour to an hour and a half to keep it so that when, when somebody goes back to the replay, 
it won't be so much that you have to watch. Okay, I ask God to watch over you, over you every step you take, every move you make, and I will see you right here with me on the next video. God bless. God bless. God bless America.